Hello, welcome to Stoichiometry Video 3. Um, so in this one, we're going to do a problem that is a little bit harder, involves a few more steps in that you're not given the original equation or having it balanced. They just uh, sort of write out this is the reaction and then you have to write out the equation from it. So let's take a look. So aqueous solutions of sodium carbonate and silver nitrate react. So those are your two reactants. So as they form a solid, which is silver carbonate, and then you're left with an aqueous sodium nitrate. And then the problem tells you that we're going to put in 3.25 grams of sodium carbonate and 2.75 grams of silver nitrate. So we have an amount of mass for each of your reactants. Now any time a stoichiometry problem gives you two masses that are put in or two amounts that are put in, could be moles or you could even tell you amount of particles that are put in, um, then you're going to end up probably uh, every single time with a limiting reactant and an excess reactant, which means that one of these is going to run out first. Now we won't know which one's going to run out first and which one's going to be left with extra until we uh, put it all in and convert it to moles. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all we have to write out the equation and balance it. So I've done that here for you. And so this equation, uh, sodium carbonate. So sodium carbonate. So this is an ionic bond and so we have to figure out the charge of each. So the charge of carbonate is negative 2, charge of sodium is positive 1, so we need two sodiums to match up to that carbonate. So we end up with NO2CO3 plus silver nitrate. Now silver is a transition metal, so typically this would have like a Roman numeral, right? So like maybe Roman numeral 1 right here should be added. But like in math or science, uh, if you don't have a number, but you should, the idea is it's one. So anytime we have something that's one, uh, we can leave it out as far as numbers go, because one can be implied. So then the charge of this is positive one, because we don't have a Roman numeral here. So positive one. So positive one for silver. And then nitrate, if we look up nitrate on our uh, polyatomic ion chart, we'll find that it carries a negative one charge. So we just need one silver and one nitrate. And then over here, when, uh, when we have uh, our products form, it says we form silver carbonate. So silver now goes with carbonate. Well, we learned over here that silver had a positive one charge. And so now that's going to take two silvers to match up with the carbonate because carbonate has a negative two charge. So this becomes Ag2CO3. And then over here we're now combining sodium and nitrate. And so sodium's positive one, nitrate's negative one, so there's one of each of those. Then we have to go about the task of making sure they're balanced. So on this side we had two sodium, and over here this compound only made one. And so this is the idea that we, we haven't balanced this yet. We haven't taken out this, uh, or we haven't put this two in here. So we put a two in front of that saying, okay, if I have two sodiums going in, I must make two complete molecules of this. So put two there. And then I, I look over here, and, and that's nice because I've put a 2 there, and that made my nitrate 2, which, um, which is good because I have to put a 2 in front of the silver to match up with the 2 silver on this side. So now my equation is balanced. I have the exact number of atoms on either side. So the idea is one molecule of this and two molecules of this makes one molecule of that and two molecules of that. So now let's put in our grams and see where we go from there. And I think that the best way to do this is to take your masses, like right here, my 3.25, and put it under the reactant that it goes with. So 3.25 is a sodium carbonate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and put it directly under my sodium carbonate, right? Um, so, so that goes there. And then I'm going to take the same and I'm going to do... Uh, put it, do this with the other one and put my 2.75 underneath my silver nitrate. So there's my 2.75 underneath there and there's my 3.25 grams underneath there. And then what I have to do is um, to figure out which one of these is limiting I have to turn it into moles because the balanced equation gives me the mole ratio and this is a one because um, of course uh, we don't need to write ones but they're implied so we have one here and two here. So my ratio is one to two between these. 
And so when I divide these by their molar mass, it'll turn them into moles. So anytime you're given an initial mass, an initial mass divided by its molar mass will, will turn into moles. So the molar mass is simply found by adding up two sodiums, one carbon, three oxygens. In this case, you're going to have one, uh, one silver, one nitrogen, and three oxygens. Now remember, when you're doing molar mass, the balanced equation does not factor in because this is just telling you I have two of these. It's not changing their individual mass. So uh, the mass of that is 170. The mass of that is 106. If I divide it by the molar mass, I find that I have uh, 0 0.031 moles of that one and 0 0.016 moles of this one. Now the balanced equation tells me that this is a 1 and this is a 2, 1 to 2. So this has to be twice the size of this. Well, 0 0.016 is smaller than 0 0.0. One, three, one. And so I know that this is the limiting reactant. So this one right here is clearly limiting. And how do I know that? Well, because it's going to run out first. Uh, this has to be twice the size of this. And so what that tells me is I can only use something for this, or I can only use the amount of this that amounts up to exactly half of this. Well, half of 0 0.016 is 0 0.008. So 0 0.008 is the amount I'm going to use of the sodium carbonate. And so then what's left over, I would find by simply subtracting 0 0.031 and 0 0.008, because this is how much I started with, and this is the total amount I could use, which I found by matching it up to the balanced equation after I had moles. And so my excess then becomes 0 0.023 moles excess. Now to convert that back into mass, I have to multiply by the, uh, by the molar mass, so 106 grams per mole. So that's what I found up here. It's the same molar mass right here, but anytime I have moles, I can convert it back into grams by multiplying it by the molar mass. And so I find that um, after this equation is totally complete, I'm still going to have 2.44 of this left over. All right, now what about silver nitrate? Well, the silver nitrate is going to get used up completely, right? Uh, there's not going to be any silver nitrate left. That's, that's how we know it's the limiting. It's going to be completely used up. So my answer for silver nitrate uh, should be zero. Okay, and so we'll put a zero in there. So that, at the end of this reaction, there will be none of this left over. Now what about silver carbonate? So if I look over here, uh, let's pull this down a little bit. If I look over here at silver carbonate, um, I need to figure out, well, how much of that's going to form? So once again, um, once I know the moles of the limiting, which is this one right here, once I know that, I can figure out the moles of everything else using that. So once you figure out your limiting, that's how you determine all the other parts of the equation. So this is 0 0.016. Uh, this one is a 1 to 2 ratio, so that's 0 0.008. And this is also a 2 to 1 ratio. So this has to be twice the size of this. So this one is also 0 0.008, exactly half of the limiting, because it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So to get that... Um, into mass, I'm going to multiply by its molar mass. Now this is a different molar mass than any of the ones we've figured out so far because it's a different molecule. So I have two silvers, one carbon, and three oxygens, which adds up to a total of 276 grams per one mole. So converting moles to mass, I multiply the amount of moles times the molar mass, I end up with 2.21. And so my 2.21 is my total amount of silver carbonate after this reaction is complete. Now what about sodium nitrate? Well, if you notice right here, what's the ratio? Two to two, which means that this is going to have the exact same amount of moles as this one. So it's going to have what? 0 0.016 moles. And so I got that all worked out for you. So 0 0.016 moles. I figured out the molar mass of this is going to end up to be uh, 85 grams per mole. It's a smaller, less, not as heavy molecule. So I have one sodium, one nitrogen, three oxygens. I end up with 85 grams per mole. Multiply the amount of moles by the molar mass to go from moles to mass, you multiply the amount of moles by the molar mass, and I get 1.36. So that's my total amount of sodium nitrate. So by just knowing a couple things going in, I found out 
exactly what I'm going to have left over after the reaction and um, what I'm going to have left over of the original reactants and what I'm going to have of the products.